Yesterday, the Lakers and LeBron James announced that LeBron had agreed to a two-year contract extension worth $97.1 million. Uh, with things like the broadcasting rights, salary cap, any of those other, other uh, funds, the deal could become worth as much as $111.1 million. Now, LeBron has an opt-out for the 24-25 season, uh, which, not surprising that he would get a player option. Um, this move is kind of like, like, I know it's big news, but I also am like, yeah, what else was going to happen? Um, I have my Lakers shirt on today. I am a, a very big Lakers fan. That's been probably the only consistent team I've liked in sports uh, since I was a kid. Um... And I just, I don't really think of this as, like, good or bad. Like, I'm just thinking about it as, like, yeah, this had to happen. Where else would LeBron go right now if it wasn't back with the Lakers? Like, no teams are wanting to trade for him right now. Because I think, like, what we're seeing with Kevin Durant, like, yes, every team wants Kevin Durant or LeBron James on their team. You don't want to necessarily give up the things you have to give up to get that player. So, like... The Nets called the Celtics and said, hey, we know you want KD. How about we do Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown for Kevin Durant? Or give us Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Derek White, and like three or four first. Like, the asking prices are too high. And if it's that high for Kevin Durant, even though he's older, it's only going to be higher for someone like LeBron James just because of, honestly, yes, all the on-court stuff, but just the name recognition. The value he brings to a team on court and off court for that area and like merchandise sales, attendance, all that stuff is huge. So it's always going to be a disproportionate thing. So I never really thought there was a chance that the Lakers would actually trade him and find like suitable value for a trade. So it feels inevitable that he would sign this contract. It feels inevitable that it would have an opt out because now the story shifts to his son, Bronny James who is reportedly starting to be wooed and uh, recruited by different schools. And the only thing really, as far as that goes, like, I wonder if this, if this deal, like, plays into the schools that Bronny might choose from. Because reportedly, now nothing's been confirmed, and LeBron has actually come out and disputed that any recruiting has actually even begun. But reportedly, the four schools that are interested in Bronny are Oregon, Ohio State, UCLA, USC. So I'm wondering if signing a two-year extension with the Lakers kind of opens the door for one of those LA teams to be uh, the preferred choice, or if it may be, you know, he goes the Ohio State route. Like, who knows? Who? It's still a year away. Who knows what's going to happen with that? Um, I just think it's interesting because, obviously, over the next year or two, all of this is going to be analyzed like crazy, uh, especially 24-25 when he has that player option. Like, the coverage is going to be out of control next offseason, I'm guessing. But the thing is, where where I get hung up on this and where I'm like, okay, well, I guess we're kind of, we've accepted our fate here, is that paying him this money, giving him $97 million for two years... You've signed all these players that uh, that he wants, all these clutch players, all these shooters, all these you know, all these players that are supposed to complement a team that is built around LeBron and AD. To me, it says that a, a trade for Kyrie is inevitable at this point. That it's inevitable that the Lakers are going to use those two firsts and Russell Westbrook and trade Ky and trade for Kyrie Irving because. That's what LeBron seems to want now, even though he wanted Russell Westbrook last year. He seems to want Kyrie. He wants an, a, a perceived upgrade at the guard position. Um, so this paying him this much money makes me think that that's inevitable because why would you give someone close to $100 million for two years? You're going to give him $50 million a year and not do what he wants player wise. Like, like, it doesn't make sense to me. So... Now you're pushing any type of rebuild window back even further. Who knows how good LeBron is going to be for how long. Uh, he's already starting to show you know, more injuries than ever before. The last couple seasons have been 
really injury stricken. They missed the playoffs last year because of really because of key injuries to LeBron and AD throughout the year. So I don't know. I don't know how long he's going to play. If it's like he's going to play until he can play a year with Bronny and then he's good and he's out. But either way, even if that team, even if that game, like say he plays three more years and the Lakers draft Bronny to keep him happy and then he retires after one year, are they going to, like, I really think that's a lot of, that's putting a lot of, uh, a lot of chips in the brawny develops well ba- uh, basket. And, like, I don't know. I really don't know what to expect. Brawny's, you know, throwing down opposite hand or offhand uh, dunks in in transition right now, so he looks better than ever. Uh, there's a debate to be had that Bryce might be better than all of them, but, you know, I'm not getting into that today. But it's just, it's an interesting spot to be because there was no other choice but to keep him here because he's so closely tied to this franchise right now. And you just gave him all this money. You just signed all these players. So it makes sense that you would just keep doing the moves that he wants, even if you don't necessarily agree with giving up all of those assets. But the problem is the more assets you give up and push that push that rebuild down the road further, the less value you're probably getting out of guys like LeBron or Anthony Davis or anyone else on the roster in a potential trade. Like, you look at someone like THT, who was such a popular trade chip last offseason. Now he comes out this year, He, you know, he had flashes, but he wasn't, you know, the tantalizing prospect he was two years ago. And then there goes that leverage for a trade with him. And, like, that's going to just keep happening with young players, with the older players. Like, if Anthony Davis keeps having injury issues, guess what? The Lakers gave up, like eight or nine assets, players, picks combined to get, you know, diminishing returns. And now they can't be getting even half of that back in a trade. So they're in a really weird spot and they're always in a weird spot because they're the Lakers and they need to have star players on the roster. But this just doesn't feel like I've seen a lot of people compare this to the Kobe contract that he got at the end of his career after he tore his Achilles where the team gave him like 65, 70 million for two, three years. Um, and it kind of just felt like a thank you. Thank you for your loyalty and thank you for your service. And that's not this because Kobe wasn't like, hey, I need you guys to do this, 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 and this. And then also give me this money. Like LeBron has shifted and, and morphed this team into his vision. And it won a title. It won the bubble title. I'm not. You know, I'm not going to turn down a ring and a banner, but they then immediately went into let's blow this up and, and, you know, get even better when like you had the championship team right there. So just a lot of odd conflicting moves and decisions. And I just, I can imagine now that they're like, okay, we have LeBron. He's selling all sorts of merch and jerseys. Tickets have never been hotter. Let's just, you know, we need a star Anthony Davis. We don't know what we can get from him night in, night out. Russell Westbrook, fans seem to be turning on him a bit. Let's lock up LeBron, do whatever he wants, write out these next couple years, and see what happens. And that's a bold strategy for any team. But for the Lakers, where, you know, the pressure and the standard is, like, that much higher, like, they didn't make the playoffs last year. And this team is not good enough to the point where if LeBron or AD or both of them are hurt and miss time they're not going to get to the playoffs. Like, they, this isn't a better roster that makes the playoffs without those guys. And trading Russ for Kyrie doesn't help either because Kyrie was trying to get a clause in his contract that said he only had to play 60 games. Like, who knows what you're getting from a potential Kyrie trade. Like, Westbrook at least is is a durable player. He played 81 games last year. The only one he sat out was the last one, and that was the coach's decision. Like, like games and availability are are key and if the Lakers aren't going to have LeBron or AD none of these moves make any difference because they're not going to have their best players that the game that the team is constructed around that's why Russell Westbrook struggled is like hey you built this team around these skills of these players neither of them are here and I'm just kind of running around trying to do my best like it's tough it's a tough thing to fit into so there's a lot of betting going on that this team is going to be healthy. 
And if they pull the trigger on a trade, I mean, I think it's kind of just inevitable at this point because otherwise, why give $100 million to LeBron? Um, just feels like it's inevitable. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be an even riskier prospect. I'll be back here, I'm sure, talking myself into it when it happens. But, it, you know, until then, that's just that's what's on my mind with it. And I want to end on a positive note. So we're going to say shout out, Pau Gasol. March 7th happens to be my wife's birthday. Uh, going to be a tough... Uh, sell on that one to go see Pau Gasol's jersey get hung in the rafters at Staples Center or sorry at the crypt where it belongs hopefully right next to the 8 and the 24 because Pau Gasol one of my favorite Lakers ever that is a dude who was very ahead of his time his his IQ his vision his passing his ability to create his own shot create so well for others as as a big man as a center Unbelievable! I have so many memories watching the Kobe Pau connection uh, in my in my living room at home growing up, jumping up and down, screaming, watching you know Pau roll to the basket for a perfect dunk or hit that perfect floater or find someone cutting down to the to the ramp. Like it's just it's about time. I'm disappointed. Like I'm really sad by the fact that um, that Kobe's not here. And that, like, we don't get to see that because the, the joy in the relationship between the two of them, I always knew how strong I was. But after he passed and, like, you saw just how involved Pal was with his family, like, that's that's big time. That's really, like, that really was something that, you know, you kind of always expect is like that. But when you see it, it's just that much more heartwarming and impactful. So... I'm sure the uh, the Bryant family will be there to honor Pau, which I think is, is beautiful. He's very deserving of this. It's about time. Uh, March 7th can't come quick enough. And funny enough, it's against the Grizzlies. <laughs> like, what a what a poetic uh, what a poetic justice moment there. Um, the Grizzlies obviously Pau's old team traded him to the Lakers in a deal that a lot of people. A lot of people I'm still friends with, uh, or, or a lot of people I'm friends with still bring up as like, this is terrible, this is collusion, what the hell is this? I think it's a great trade either way, however you look at it, you know, come on, let's not get too nitpicky. Um, but about time, uh, it's only fitting, he deserves it. Um, probably one of the most deserving Lakers to get their jersey hung that isn't already there. Um, that might be something I... I go through later, like, different players that don't have their jerseys retired yet. But uh, until then, just congratulations to Pau Gasol. Very deserving. Uh, congratulations on becoming the highest paid NBA player ever, LeBron, with this two-year, $100 million extension. Let's see what happens. Uh, I don't know. Lakers fans, drop your thoughts, uh, predictions for the team, or any other moves they might make in the comments. Let me know, and I'll be back. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.